good morning. It feels like a very early morning to me because my dog got me up twice during the night last night because she had to go out. It was one of those nights. So I am energetic because I am forcing myself to be energetic. It's like, no, I will not be sleepy. Actually, I'm not really sleepy. It's the weird thing. Um, I just feel kind of stretched out. You know that feeling where it's like you're kind of stretched out because maybe your sleep wasn't as good as it could be? So yes, here I am. I am back with yellow. So it's good that we're doing slightly more muted yellow today because you have a slightly more muted Anne. Woohoo! Um, caffeine painting dog. I know. I had my caffeine this morning. Caffeine only goes so far though and I don't like to depend on it. Like that's something that I, that I started, oh gosh, over a decade ago I decided I didn't want to have to have a ton of caffeine every morning to get going. So I started scaling back on it. And now I just do a blend of green and black tea in the morning. One cup. That's it. So, you know, it's I'm up to my natural. So you guys should actually be kind of scared because I don't overcaffeinate and I'm still this bouncy, even on short sleep. <laughs> it does make me wonder, Anne, what you were like with like four cups of coffee. Oh, God. Well, I was also a lot less, less healthy. So uh, I was a lot more sluggish. You know, my bottom, my bottom line energy was lower. That's fair. Uh, whereas now, because I'm on a good diet and I've lost weight, my bottom line energy is a lot higher. So, so. what I'm getting from this is we need to try four cups of coffee now. No. <laughs> and then do a show. It will upset my stomach. We're not going to do anything that upsets Anne's stomach. A marathon show of <laughs> good eight Good morning. Hours. Yeah, okay. If we want to do like an eight-hour marathon, then yeah, Anne needs more caffeine. We need to pump some caffeine into me at least halfway through the show. We'll get you an um, IV. Yes, well, good coffee nerdery beer because it's more yellow today. We're just going to work with a bit more muted color scheme. We're going to um, try mixing some different shadows for our yellow. Because yesterday I went with a very orange yellow because I was working on the Efreet. I was like, well, this is what you'd probably go for on a fire creature, uh, which is a common place you're going to use yellow. But now I think we're going to go a bit cooler and a bit more muted just to show you guys a different set of yellows that you can do. Um, I don't need four cups worth. No, I probably just need one more cup of caffeine, Muses. Just one. Hey, Gantrell, how's it, how's it going? Hi, Numbat. Hi, everybody. Hi, Rings. Hi, Coops and Scott. Everybody. Yeah. So tomorrow, tomorrow, guys, I think, um, because due to popular demand, because it seems like a lot of people are asking for this, I think I'm going to paint a white Velociraptor tomorrow. <laughs> because painting white... And I looked at my shelf, and Mr. Velociraptor was there, and he's actually pretty smooth. He doesn't have texture except on his back, so I can act like his skin is actually like cloth, which is funny. But he actually was the best model I had for painting white, like out, up on the, on the shelf. Because I was trying to focus on models that we had a lot of, so that people wouldn't run out. If people wanted to order one to paint along later, they wouldn't run out, right? And so, yeah, because I was doing that, I just, I didn't pick necessarily for subject matter more than just in general. And so I was like, well, we do painting white. Um, I can do a white velociraptor. And actually that would tickle me. I would, I would have fun with that. So <laughs> I'm okay with it. Just as Justin's giving me the, uh, the skeptical look, guys. He I mean, doesn't think a white velociraptor would rock. I think a white velociraptor I'd would love rock. to see it. Let me put it that way. Yeah. I'm a little sniffly today, guys. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we can do it albino if you want. Albino would definitely start with a yellower color. So yeah. Yeah, and there's, and albino reptiles are like a thing. So it's, it's, uh, it's doable. Yeah, we could look up some white birds. I mean, there are a couple, usually, I mean, white is, white's not hard. And it's all, I mean, it's more work. That's what's different with white. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, <laughs> see, Quindy enjoys the way my brain works. But then she's dating bug lips. That's Mark fair. that off on your on your bingo cards, everybody. Uh, <laughs> so if you enjoy the way my brain works, Quindy, I'm wondering what I have in common with bug lips. I'm definitely not a goblin, though. I am definitely a dwarf as far as it goes. So just for the record. I uh, used to want to be an elf, but I'm totally a dwarf. Did you add any yellow paints to today's painting, by the way? Uh, or is it the same paints from yesterday? Well, actually, it's, we're, we're mixing it up. We need 9074 Palomino Gold, which we did use yesterday. However, we also need 9109 ruddy leather. Um, add, add 89507 Amadeus Red just in case, because I love it. It's my new fave, and I might use it today. 89507? Yep, 89507. I already have that As Amadeus Red. Yeah, that sucker, everybody should buy a bottle of that, in my opinion. It's a wonderful red. It's possibly the best red I've ever done. Like, thank you, Paizo, for the idea to use that red, because I was like, really? And then I tried to mix it, and then it looked wonderful. So, all right, but we're also using 9303 NMM Gold Highlight today, and we're using 9095 Clear Yellow. So we do have some crossover, but you notice that we have dropped all the oranges out. Uh, the only oranginess we're going to get is from natural red pigment in our ruddy leather and Am Amadeus Red. Um, yes, I, I, am, I am a short person. 
Yeah, chalkiness, okay, so chalkiness, guys, thinning too much. You get chalky when you thin too much, especially if you are, say, using, if you're not using Master Series, where you're using a paint that's gonna fall out of solution faster, um, like Vallejo, for example, is gonna, it, it's, it thins nicely to a point and then it falls out of solution because the resin that they use for their paint is very heavy. So when you thin it to a certain point, you break it and it falls out of solution. And at that point, if you try highlighting with it, it's gonna be chalky. Um, other than that, like that, I believe that thin, too thin paint is, is the prime thing of chalkiness. And honestly, you can get rid of chalkiness by glazing. So, um, yeah, actually it's, it's 9095 canary yellow also. Uh, there's one in Pathfinder as well. Um, neon yellow, I forget, 9287, I think. Um, there's very specific yellows that I've kept greener. The reason for that is that green yellows aren't as popular as warm. People like the warmth of the orange yellows. They love lantern yellow. They love marigold yellow. Um, they love all that stuff. So, so we have more orangey yellows than we do um, more greenish yellows. I find NMM Gold Highlight is a little bit more greenish. I tried to keep it more on a vibrant yellow side because it uses all three yellow pigments. I actually did a PDF about it on the Patreon. Um, for those of you just joining us, I also have a Patreon. Ta-da! Moveout did not give it to you this time. I just remembered to mention it. Uh, so yeah, patreon.com slash paintingbig. I do a lot of PDFs on there, which are a nice uh, supplement to video content. So, all right. Oh, Anne's Patreon. There we go. Thank you, Reaper Miniatures. Yes, Anne's Patreon. Yeah, it's not just um, exclamation point Patreon planner because we have more than one person who has had a Patreon on here. So it, it's, uh, it's the exclamation point Anne's Patreon without the apostrophe. It's grammatically incorrect, but it works. <laughs> so yeah, go check me out on there. I've got some free stuff up so you can kind of look at how I roll. Um, and yeah, enjoy. I hope you join. A lot of you already support me. Thank you. All right, now let's just, uh, well, so let's get into this, Justin. Let's talk about greenish yellows. Let's talk about, hey, Fraley, how's it going? Um, we're going to use Ms. Efreet again. You've seen I've already uh, base coated her front with a much more muted. If you look at this, look at how orangey that is. And that's, see how that looks more greenish? And remember, color is relative, you guys. So you could be, if I was using this, this yellow on a model with no orange whatsoever, it would look a lot warmer. Like, see, it looks a lot warmer there. But the minute you add orange, it starts to look more muted. And when you look at it and directly compare it to an orangey or yellow, then it starts to look really muted. So, ooh, we're almost to the thousand members on Discord. Rock it. So... So you're always going to get that kind of thing. So if you want your yellow to read as cooler, um, don't usually don't want to use orange on the rest of the model, or you know, or, or actually, sorry, you you can use orange on the rest of the model. It will cool down your yellow, but be aware of what it will do to your yellow. Um, that's that's the thing, right? Is like everything. Nothing is in a vacuum on a miniature. Whenever you add something, it's going to do stuff. If you add dark colors, it's going to make your yellow look brighter. If her skin was painted white, this yellow would look darker. It's always relative. Everything changes. That's why I tend to paint in sections because with every change, I can see what, wh how it impacts the miniature and I can kind of make a judgment call on how to do it. Um, likewise, if you do the thing where you block in all the colors very fast, that at least, you might run into trouble, but at least you can see the overall effect and see how everything is influenced and make judgments then on how to tune it. So. Um, you could put your miniature into a vacuum, but your colors would still not be in a vacuum in relation to each other, Quindy. Sorry. You could try to, like, you know, tricks, trick the colors all you want. The colors are not impressed. <laughs> all right. Ah, uh, good morning, Sentimental Minis. All right, so well, let's uh, talk about what mixes I'm using today. And you can see, actually, let me mix that up. This lower one is just, uh, I had prepped some plain old yellow ochre, i.e. Palomino Gold. All right, so uh, my base coat is actually Palomino Gold with a drop, and I did actually use a drop of Lantern Yellow before I forgot, but it still stayed pretty muted, so I'm okay with it. Um, that's what this color is, is uh, four drops of Palomino Gold and a drop of Lantern Yellow 9407. Although, uh, in retrospect, I meant to use Clear Yellow instead. Uh, so we'll, we'll move forward using clear yellow because greenish, greenish, more greenish. Um, Palomino, more greenish. Um, it's Collins. Everybody say hi to Collins. He stuck his head in the room. Hey. What are we doing today? We are doing, um, a, we're going to continue talking about yellow because there's still questions. I'm going to do more of a muted greenish yellow instead of the bright 
the bright, bright yellow, because that's what some people said yesterday they had problems with was the brightness of it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to tone it down, kind of like one of the models that John showed us on the TV yesterday. Okay. Um, so I was going to show them a color set for that. I was just playing with yellow on top of pinks to try and make oranges and stuff. It's, it's uh, an yeah, actually try, um, try doing yellow and then putting a a wash of uh, clear magenta over it. Okay. I find that that also makes an orange. Nice. You all can file that away. See, Collins was very useful sticking his head in. Mm -hmm. uh, will Justin have his babies soon? Oh, I don't even want to know. Is pregnant? No. What? <laughs> you know what? That's more likely than, than the, you know, the opposite. <laughs> oh, if you have puppies, then Dave will, you'll be Dave's favorite person. He'll want you to bring them up, though. And they'll be corgi puppies, too. Oh, ridiculous uh, cute. Ridiculous cute. You should not, that said, you should not have puppies irresponsibly. As a past responsible breeder, reputable breeder, I can say that. So, do not have puppies unless you have homes lined up and you know what you're doing. All right. So, do, 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 but we won't get on that because I could get on my, uh, my major melt crate about that. And painting dog totally understands what I mean because she's a dog person. She's an awesome dog person. All right, so cool. Let us find a brush to use. What brush do I want to use today? Eh, the Windsor Newton. Yeah, sure, why not? Doesn't really matter. <laughs> Reaper John, um, I am considering a time change to the stream. Um, the stream was actually originally uh, put to start earlier than I exactly liked, and as I surmised and worried, the stream starts a little bit late every day because of that. So be aware, everybody. We may shift that. I'm going to be talking to some people about it. Yeah, it's, it's very likely we start at 1130. Yeah, it's, it's, it's likely it's to, we, yeah, it's not a big shift, but uh, it's just the logistics. I mean, the logistics of my day and the requirements of my medical stuff mean that I, uh, I have a certain amount of prep time that needs to happen in the morning. So we may need to start just a little later. And I have a, a drive to work that I didn't have before as well, um, back when I worked closer, lived closer to Reaper. So, all right, so here what I'm doing as I'm talking about things. Who is snorting an eight ball? You are the dog father, Ted Dusty. You are not wrong. Uh, Dave already has, what, three dogs, right? Am I right on that? Uh, I think he, he, and he had has a, four hmm? until recently, right? Yeah, I think so. I think, I'm not uh, sure what they have right now. They have a dachshund. And a Sheltie, right? A Sheltie. Yep. And there's a third one that I don't remember. Uh, I think maybe, it's a mix. Maybe it's more than three, actually. I'm not sure. Dave loves dogs. That's all there is to it. Um, but yeah. Any time is a good end time. I agree. I agree. Hey, Nomad Zeke. So yeah. So here we go. So let's uh, just essentially this color. You might remember I mixed it yesterday. So what we're doing today, if you don't want an orangey color, you want to use something that is more brownish, but still has a little bit of a yellowish hint to it. So I've mixed uh, four drops of Palomino Gold with one drop of Ruddy Leather, and that's what this nice warm yellowy tan color is that I've painted into the shadows on her. Now you notice maybe that it's very similar to 9073 Chestnut Gold. So if you don't want to mix, you can use Chestnut Gold in this capacity. Although, as mentioned earlier, if you want your colors to go together and you're just picking a random color off the rack that you're not sure about the pigments in it, you usually do want to add a little bit of your base coat color into that. So if I use chestnut gold, if I want to make absolutely sure that it goes with my base coat color, I will just mix four drops of that and then say, where's my big brush? And a brush full of my original color. See how these are very similar? But this is a little warmer here or a little browner. And I'm just going to add a little bit of my base coat in. And now it looks almost identical. Like these colors, and it'll work fine with our yellow because it has a little bit of that yellow in it. That's just, honestly, you can highlight green with pink as long as you mix um, transitions and it will look fine. It might look weird because it implies a pink light source. Then you have to highlight everything with pink. But you know, for those of you who just want to weird out people, go for it. All right, so that's just an example. So yeah, so you see they're very close. So if you did not want to mix, your triad would be, let me see here, Palomino, maybe with a little bit of clear yellow mixed in. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. That's a pretty good triad. Let's see. Yeah, I like, I maybe like this a little bit better. 
I think that's a prettier one. So when we use a highlight, we'll grab our NMM Gold highlight. So I'd say this is a very good alternative yellow triad if you are going for something that is more muted. If you do not want a screaming bright yellow on your piece, then go this way. And maybe, maybe mix just a little bit of clear yellow if you want to pop it closer to yellow. Because the Palomino is definitely more of a, a golden, mustardy color. So if you want to pop it closer to yellow, then do mix some clear yellow or some lantern yellow into it. So you can mix either of these guys into it into your Palomino um, to pop it just a little bit more yellow. Uh, otherwise it will definitely look more like, like a mustard, like an ochre, and so up to you if you want it or you don't want it, just keep it in mind. Now, let's talk about mixing other colors, mixing colors into yellows, because you can have some uh, issues when you try to mix a color with too much black in. I mentioned this yesterday. So let's grab our Palomino Gold, and we'll make a couple more wells of color, and I'll show you guys that. Let's see here. Let's do one, two, three, four. Hypothetical mixes. This is also why I love having a big uh, well palette like this with lots of different wells, as I can, me I can uh, mess around with mixing and see different colors. So first, let's use my favorite, you know, russet brown, 91.99. It's a very warm, yellowy brown as it is, so it might be okay with this. So let's, but it also does have more black in it than ruddy leather, so let's take a look. We'll drop a drop in that, and we'll see how that looks next to this. Do, 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 do. All right, so that's going to go a lot more brown, and it is a little more greenish. See it? See the green? As opposed to this that's warmer? That's because of the presence of the black pigment. You never want to use anything with too much black pigment. This would be, if you wanted less of a warm highlight, if you wanted to take it more toned down, say you were just using yellow ochre um, as your, as your mid-tone, you just wanted the ochre. Uh, and you didn't want it more intense, then I would say that mixing a drop of russet brown in would be very good. Um, and now let's try blackened brown, which is 9137. It's the midtone of that triad. Walnut is its shadow, and as you all know, walnut is close to black. So you know blackened brown has a lot of black in it. I expect this to go very green. Boop. And also to kind of really darken down, because black is very strong in this particular triad. Oh wow, yeah, it went way dark and very muted. See how it's almost got, it's almost graying out because it's got so much of a, it's shifting greener. The only thing that keeps it from shifting really green is the fact that it's got uh, red oxide in there, which is what makes it brown instead of black. And the red oxide essentially counteracts the greenness that would normally associate yellow and black. So we end up going more toward a grayish, weird drab color. Yes, yes. Black and yellow makes green. Exactly. So, uh, let's see here. Oh, MG photo. There we go. Sure. <laughs> Palomino gold won't, won't it, it, you know, we can make more. Don't worry. We can make more. But yeah, Palomino is just, if you're going to paint yellow, get a bottle of Palomino gold. It really is extremely useful. All right. So that's kind of ways you could go. Now, if you were going to do this, I would almost say that you just want to use it as an additional shadow. Like, I'd, I'd want to mix something that's halfway between. I think that that one drop took it down too much. So, halfway between those. And now what this looks a lot like, just to give you an idea, is green ochre, 9128, which is the mid-tone to the uh, it's uniform brown, green ochre, and faded khaki is the triad. And it is a kind of muted tans. It's good for military stuff, but it's also good if you just like organic stuff. Like I like to use that triad if I'm like doing the underbelly of dragons, if you want that kind of yellowy tan look that's not bright. Um, it's really good for the underside of black dragons if you're using like olive greens in the black to make it look like a swampy dragon. In fact, I used faded khaki as my underbelly color for swampy dragon. So that's a triad to remember also is 9127, 9128, 9129. It's one that a lot of people overlook, but when you're looking at something organic like that and reptilian and dragons and all that sort of thing, it is a good light color that's somewhat neutral that you can use with those. Um, do not use it with bright colors. It looks generally terrible, unless your bright colors are small. If you remember, I actually used a pretty bright blue to highlight Swampy Dragon to imply blue light falling on him. Um, it worked with that because my blue highlights are very small, and the rest of the dragon is pretty muted. So yes. All right, let's see here. 
so yeah, so I would go there probably, um, I would go with a half and half and then I would go down to this. This is just, the, this is just very, very muted. So it, it don't, if you've got more bright colors on your color, on your uh, model and you, and they're not small areas, I would, I would maybe be real dubious about that one. Um, so yes, if you mute one color on your mini, you got to mute everything just a little bit. It does not work to do muted color next to bright color if it's taking up a significant portion of the model. All right, so let's see. Let's, I'm thinking about using this actually just to see how it works, the russet brown mix. It is going to take it more green because this is very warm and this is very cool. So I'm just going to paint it right down the middle. I'm actually going to make a shadow right under that armor piece. And I'm going to wipe out my uh, previous layer. See, you can see now, actually you can see right on camera, how this is definitely more brown and muted and this still looks a little bit orange. And this is an example of how colors shift as you add colors. Dubious brown, that would actually be excellent. Remind me of that at some point, uh, Quindy. Uh, you're right, dubious brown would be a great like Apple, April Fool's color. I think there used to be a color Partha or, or somebody used to do a baby poop pink or something like that, or baby poop, poop brown. That would be a dubious brown in my opinion. In fact, I actually had one person ages ago, God, it must have been like right after Master Series started, complained that we did not have a, uh, an equivalent for Baby Poop Brown. Felt that it was a needed color and that uh, we had missed the boat on that one. Right. I've always said that if we, if we don't have a, an actual wet sample of the old color, we, I can't match it exactly. I don't even want to try because then I'm going to, I'm just going to fail because I'm going to mass, uh, miss, miss uh, matching your conception of the color. And it's the only one, the only time I've ever been asked for that color. So I'm, I'm dubious about whether we actually missed the boat. Hey, Shiza Gaming. Thank you. Thank you for hosting us. I am doing yellows today. More yellows like yesterday, except yesterday we did a very orangey yellow that's more bright. And today we're working a little bit more muted. Uh, yeah, Twitch is dicey on the notification emails. I agree. I don't always get notified when my streamers go live. It's kind of like here and there. All right, so now we've got a much more muted shadow and that does take it more brown. Remember on the back when we had a lot of orange showing and it took our, um, our yellow way toward orange? Uh, well, this is the same thing. If our brown gets too big here, our color is going to look not yellow, but brown. So we have to watch that. That's again, and I'm gonna talk about a lot about surface control tomorrow, but again, what I call surface control is how much of the surface is covered by a given color because the surface, the color that has like 50% or more of the surface is the color the eye is going to read the, the surface as. So if I want this loincloth to look yellow, then over 50% of it needs to be yellow. And if I let my shadows get too big and I lose some of the yellow to like maybe white highlights and brown shadows, then it's going to start looking like a yellowy brown instead of a yellow. So be aware of how much of the area is taken up by each color. And if you have a color that you do want the area to look, don't lose it. Don't, uh, don't put your highlights too broad or your shadows too broad. Be conscious of uh, how it looks at each stage. All right, so now if I do get too brown here, I can always glaze. Like I definitely blocked these in and you can see my brush strokes very evidently because um, we're t more talking about color than technique today. But if I wanted to take those brush strokes down, I'd just grab some of my mid-tone and I'd mix a glaze. So one like brush full of that and a brush full of water. Want it to be very, very thin. A glaze is not a wash. It is an extremely thin layer of paint you put over as a filter. You can see how you almost can't see that. That's perfect. So one to one is where your glazes start. Some stronger colors may need more action. Um, I'm going to put just a thin coat of that over all the shadows I just painted in just a real thin one. And if I see it pooling, I'm going to take my brush and kind of wick it out. I don't want it to pool like a wash. That's not what we're going for. I just want it to kind of lighten and, and tint that color and hide my brush strokes a little bit. All right. Beef in the hole. Oh man, you're just looking for the freaking, uh, um, the bingo card. Everybody wants me to mention my boyfriend so we can do boyfriend bingo. Well, I have a boyfriend. I love him to death. So sorry, beef in the hole. 
Cannot do. I'm holding out. Holding out for my man. All right. Do, 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 do. And I'm just going back over my top part. If I really want to blend in this line, I can kind of just use a sideways stroke to mess it up. Boop, boop, doot. There we go. All right, let's look, let's look at highlights. So <laughs> I'm using a lot of palette today. I used a lot of palette yesterday too because I wanted to show you guys different colors. Aren't this pretty though? See, I think this is pretty. Some people don't like yellows and yellow browns, but I think they're very useful. Um, so let's use, let's, let's show a couple mixes. Let's mix clear yellow in and let's use NMM Gold Highlight. So I'll get more of my Palomino Gold up here. Yeah, it's kind of like soft, right? It's a softer yellow. It's a yellow that goes with more. And this is, this is the thing. Um, boyfriend Bingo. Planar Crossroads, they mentioned, uh, John, uh, Reaper John mentioned it, uh, that every time I mention my boyfriend or, uh, or we hear Bug Lips mentioned that uh, we should have a bingo card, like Boyfriend Bingo, um, just because I tend to mention mine a lot. Although that time I was provoked, I'll have you say. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, so boyfriend bingo. Or though it would have to be a significant other bingo, really, to be equitable. So four drops of Palomino and a drop of NMM Gold Highlight, or four drops of Palomino and a, a drop of clear yellow. Two, three, four. Lovely. Let's see here. Doo -doo, boing. All right. Oh, just a Reaper Twitch bingo card as, as a PDF so people can play along. Uh, she's actually, her, her hair will not stay that color. This is Fireball Orange, by the way. Or no, it isn't. It was um, Sunset, or Sunrise Orange. Sorry, Bones, 9406. Um, I don't like it. I'm actually going to take it darker. I'm going to probably mix it with a drop of Amadeus Red. It's, it's great, but it's not great as a base coat. It needs to be, this needs to be the color of the highlights, actually. Um, do do do. But anyway, uh, let's see here. What am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm mixing up paint. Losing track of it. Thing on my jig. TM. Oh, what's a mahuzit? Actually, I like what's a mahuzit. Also, thing my jigs and what's a mahuzits. Okay, so that one's with the NMM gold highlight. Oh, I'm the one who mispronounces names, John. Come on, you've heard me at the Reaper, uh, Reaper MSP Open Paint Competition Award Ceremony at ReaperCon. I always mispronounce names. Okay, so ochre plus clear yellow. I am going to add a little bit, going to need to add a little bit of white to that because as you can see, it's very close to the base coat. Uh, clear yellow being, I mean, yellow is lighter than the ochre, but it's not significantly lighter. I guess we could add one more drop. Let's try adding one more drop first. It should take it just a little lighter. But from there, we'd probably need to add white. All right, there we go. Also, as I discussed yesterday, uh, yellow has the lowest amount of coverage, and that tends to also make it a very weak color in mixes. So you all have been, I'm sure almost everybody has tried to mix yellow and red and gotten a very red with a little bit of yellow uh, color out of it. Um, this is because just the, the yellow pigment is inherently weak. It's a very, very fine pigment grind. It disperses, but it doesn't overwhelm things very easily. Uh, red tends to have a higher dispersion and it uh, has a, also a, a larger pigment grind. So it's uh, just, it overwhelms poor yellow. If you want to mix, mix a nice orange, use a very small amount of red. Um, all right, so let's see if I can use that as a highlight. It is a little bit lighter. I don't know, the NMM Gold Highlight is selling me better on it. Now, NMM Gold Highlight does have a bit of white in it, so if I really wanted to, my equivalent would normally be to add just a touch of white to this. Boom. But this is a very, as you can see, NMM Gold Highlight added to the ochre. It's very warm and buttery, so I think that actually might be our winner as far as what I want to try to highlight on first. But I will mix this second one, which is the clear yellow plus the uh, Palomino Gold. Yeah, they're very similar. They're really, really similar, actually. Mostly because the yellows are just a little, just weaker in general than the, uh, the ochre. The ochre is very strong and they're very similar. So let's grab, let's grab our NMM 
gold highlight one and see how light it is and if I need it. Now remember when you're layering that if your colors are very close together like this, because these, these highlight colors are not very different from our base colors, um, you can use them thicker in layering uh, as long as your colors are closer together. Yeah, this is way too close. Um, and the reason is that if the colors are really close, you're not going to really be able to see the brush strokes anyway. They're going to just blend in. So I want this to have a bit more differen differential, um, so I will throw another drop of NMM Gold Highlight into this sucker. Maybe two. Ooh, now we're at three drops of NMM Gold Highlight, four drops of ochre. Let's see how this looks. Um, and I'm going to add some water because for highlighting. Now I'm shifting the color lighter. I will want it a little thinner. These are all very high coverage colors. There's white and the NMM Gold Highlight. And the ochre is very high coverage by itself, the Pilomino Gold. All right. Do, do, do. Uh, yeah, uh, Chibi Army, sorry, I missed it. Um, do, 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 do. And yes, I do use just reading glasses. Uh, my normal vision is actually better than 2020. I had it tested last year. But my close in vision, of course, what I use to do my job is, uh, is going to pieces. So I use uh, three times magnification reading glasses. I don't like Optivisors because they, they're out so far that I tend, to, I tend to hit them with my brush when I'm getting like close. Um, so I don't like how they sit out in front, although for people who, who do naturally wear glasses, I do recommend them. I mean, it's one of the, it's the best option for you at that point. And because you're used to having something on your face, you probably adapt to it better than I do. Um, but, uh, but yeah, three times readers. I mean, and actually I got this, this uh, whole thing from Marika Reimer. Um, who you guys may remember as one of the best miniature painters in North America, um, although she's semi-retired now. Um, but uh, she actually used to wear reading glasses, and at that time my vision was still really good, so I never saw the point. But once it started to go, you know, you hit 40, and then your, uh, your warranty expires. Actually, your second warranty expires. I think you lose the first one at 30. Um, so, yeah, I uh, started going blind at, uh, in my close-in vision at 40. It was literally when I was 40, like months after I turned 40, I noticed that my vision was going. What's my secret to great vision? Mostly genetics, sadly, beef in the hole, because uh, my great aunt on my dad's side, like she lived to be 93 and had perfect vision pretty much up till she went. So I suspect that some of my perfect vision is indeed genetic. Uh, I also am um, on a really anti-inflammatory diet. Uh, have been for a couple of years now. So that may also help. Inflammation can definitely affect your vision. So if you're eating foods that you like but that your body may not react well to, that can be a thing. Or so they say. But yeah, I was on the keto diet for two years. I went off of it to try a slightly higher carb Mediterranean based diet. It was it was just it was still really low carb. It was still under under 60 grams a day. But um, it actually I didn't feel nearly as good on it. And so then I try I'm trying this new diet now, which actually is a it's not strictly keto. It's it's kind of weird actually. It's almost like you crossbred the keto and Mediterranean diet and you got really picky about starches and proteins. But I feel great, so it must be okay. Um, but yeah, ketogenic, ketogenic diet is, uh, is very ri widely regarded as a very anti-inflammatory diet, so it can help with lots of stuff. Uh, Ooh, thanks, Madman, for your resub. Ten-month streak. You really like us. All right, so I brought up some highlights here, guys, and we're definitely going more yellow now. I'm using my um, three drops of 9303. Let me get all my paint colors in here. We're using a mix of this for our highlights. Do, do, do. There you go. Boom. That's what we're using. And as you can see, it makes a nice buttery golden yellow, but it's not, I mean, it's not a bright yellow, but it's still recognizably yellow. It's not tan. Um, now, one thing I will mention, if you did put actual more saturated yellow on this somewhere, it would start to redist tan because, again, it shifts. Uh, so you, you just kind of got to keep that in mind. I'm going to actually add some pure white to this now. I'm going to just take a, what I always do is just take a couple of brushfuls of my previous mix and add white because that way I know that my highlight is going to go with a previous one. Again, it's that whole mixing a little bit of this color into your next stage so that you know that the two will go together. 
makes layering so much easier. Do, 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 do. Well, thank you. I'm glad you think we rock, Madman. We think you rock, too. We think all you guys rock, actually. You are, honestly, the best part of my morning. Well, okay, maybe breakfast is like a close like second, but you're still the best part of my morning. Do, do, do. All right, so there's our mixing, our mixture of this, adding a couple, uh, one drop of pure white adds, uh, shifts it very, uh, very, uh, quite a bit actually, because the white is very strong. It's very, it's very highly pigmented, so. Yeah, Optivisors, um, it's it's cool. If you have a paint club or a painting community near you, you may be able to try out other people's Optivisors first to get an idea for which magnification you can use. I find that some people are using really high magnification Optivisors, Real Chibi Army, and I, I find that's a little bit weird because at that point you're trying to put in details that, one, you really may not have the brush control for yet, and also details that may not even show up to the naked eye, right? Because let's face it, people looking at your models aren't going to be having Optivisors on most of the time. Unless you are painting in a paint club and people are wearing their reading glasses and Optivisors. Um, but, but yeah, so I would say go for a lower magnification rather than a higher magnification. I think that, for example, 10 times magnification is too much. Um, I mean, you can see everything. You can put the colored iris into eyes at that point, but you can't see it when you take your Optivisor off, so what's the point? I mean, you maybe could see it on, in, in photographs. I've actually done that. I actually did an eyeball that looked great under an 8 times Optivisor and then looked at it in the, with my naked eye and it didn't look nearly as good. So it's always like, where do you want it to look good? I'm going to make a very small highlight here with my white added color. Remember, I don't want my highlights to get too big or the, all the yellow will look lighter. So if I really expand and cover a lot of this surface with the bright highlight, because I did it here because this sticks out, right? It would catch the light for sure. But otherwise, I'm trying to minimize my highlights a little bit. I don't want everything. I don't want to lose that nice, rich midtone of, of uh, yellow that I've got. I like the buttery look. So I'm just going to hit some of these edges because a lot of this, this goes straight into a fold, so it would not be... Um, very light on the broader surface. So yeah, so there we're going. We're going there. Good, good. Yeah, so you guys can see. So the brown definitely, actually, you'll notice another thing, which is that here, yeah, I see. Okay, so the, this is very orangey, and it plays with the orange in her hair very well. Um, this, being more muted, does not play so well with the orange in her hair because we've got a very vibrant color up here because sunrise orange is extremely saturated and we've got a muted color down here. So that's what I mean when, when you're dealing with a brighter color and a more muted color. You got to kind of, whenever you go for really muted, make sure the rest of your colors are a little bit muted too. So this would not be necessarily the best gold or yellow color for a fire creature, but it would go great on a dragon um, that was more of a muted red or um, a muted blue or, or green or black. Uh, it would go fantastic on those things for the underbelly or whatever you wanted to put it. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of other stuff. I mean, this is also not a bad... If you're, if you're looking for like a golden color for like a horse and you don't want it to be too yellow, this is a good call. That's why this is Palomino Gold, actually, is that originally uh, I wanted it to be more horse color. So let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, light is key. Uh, Sean Allen, is that a question for me? Plastic or metal? Um, actually, it doesn't matter as long as it's a good sculpt. So these days I actually love resin more than anything because I can get such fine detail on it and there's such nice sculpts. Um, Bones Black is close to resin in feel. Uh, but yeah, light, 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 light. Um, I used to use two 100 watt bulbs, two lamps on either side of me with 100 watt bulbs, reveal lights. Uh, now I would use fluorescence for that. It, instead, in my paint setup at home, I, obviously I stream, so or I, uh, I do video, so I actually have big lights now, in addition to uh, to everything else. But yeah, at least at least the equivalent of 100 watts on either side of your painting area is the best, I think, because um, you want to really light up the model, and that's your eyes are going to be strained far more from not having enough light than from not having like good enough close-in vision. Like I, I really think that, you know, people are like, oh, that fine detail, don't you strain your eyes? No, 
you really don't. It's it's all lighting. If you can if you can get some good light, you won't have eye strain. Yeah, rings, horse colors. Well, that's why there's a chestnut, uh, the chestnut brown color. The uh, oh, where is it? Ninety seventy one. Yeah, chestnut brown is for chestnuts. Although you can also use the auburn hair triad. Just be careful; it'll be very vibrant. Um, yeah. Or not fluorescent. Sorry, I meant um, my old bulbs were incandescent. Well, no, it's it's LED. It's the new, isn't it? It's not fluorescent. Is that the color I'm thinking of? You know what I mean. The new um, the new bulbs aren't they? Are they not fluorescent? Are you thinking incandescent? No, the opposite. Like the new ones, the new daylight bulbs that they have. Isn't that a fluorescent? But they're, uh, or is LED, everything I LED think, I think now. Everything's LED to my knowledge. Like, okay, Unless right. you get the actual bulbs that are the twisty ones. Yeah, the twisty ones. I was, I was using. Those, those are fluorescent. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. They're daylight fluorescents. It's the ones I was using after I used Reveal because I went away from incandescence. Um, do I ever use purple to shade yellows? Madman, yes. Um, runic purple. I do not have it on my plate today. I used it on the hippocampus that I painted uh, during the Kickstarter. So if you go back to the the shows that we did during the Kickstarter, you will see that I actually do use um, 9424 runic purple to shade yellow. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, sorry. Com yeah, right. Compact fluorescents were what I used before I had access to LED. Right. Right. But it was the best thing out there at the time, so... Now I have an LED, LED light, like right above my station. I have an LED ring light, and I have two, I don't know if they're LED. I kind of think they're big CF, you know the big, your big box light, your big, um, big kind of square one that you used to have, Justin? Uh, it's behind you, actually. Okay, is it, yeah, what's the bulb on, on that? That is an LED corn cob with, hold on, uh, something like uh, 1,500 lumens. Yeah, so I've got two of those suckers. That's it's, what I upgraded to, it's a guys. a huge corn cob. So, yeah. So, okay. So, it is an LED corn cob. Not a, not a CFL. It looks like a CFL, but it's not. See, I just, like, look for good lights. And I liked Justin's gigantic uh, square lights, the one that he's using for a backlight here. But I have two of those at home. That was my first thing when I made my first Patreon goal was to buy decent lights. And I think it really makes a difference. Oh, it does. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that too. I could do a third day of yellow with shading with purples and highlighting with weird stuff. I don't know. Well, actually, you really don't highlight yellow with weird stuff because yellow is so light already that mixing other colors into the highlight just makes it look a little wrong. There are some limits. My Fitbit just told me, hey, you have not taken any steps this hour. Sorry, Fitbit. I don't care. All right, I'm just making sure I've got my highlights going on here. So, all right, so we've got this going up. This is a very nice muted yellow, I think. As you can see, I, I popped up the highlight here um, on up to, to that color, which is quite light. We could even go a little bit lighter and just hit the very edges and really pop it up. I probably would need Justin to adjust the, uh, well, I don't know. See, this is a hard time, the yeah, Fitbit get bent. Well, I like it most of the time, Rhett Rings. It does make me walk. It does make me get my steps. I do climb stairs because of it, so it does make me get exercise, and exercise is key. I feel much worse when I don't get my exercise. Yeah, I wish I, I suppose I could make, like, uh, Justin fetch me some purple. I don't know if we have runic purple here. Maybe somewhere. I'm going to do one more highlight and just make it very, very small on the edges. Remember, shrink the area that your highlights take up as you put them on. So that needs, this layer needs to be smaller than the previous highlight layer. And as you can see, my previous highlight layer was very small. Really, it's just on the edges. See it there? So, yeah, I have a little, I have one of the ReaperCon lamps, actually. The ones we use at ReaperCon and Paint Club. I have one of those for home that I like as well. Because I can control the intensity of the light. Although, I've got so much light already, it's just like, at that point, there are no shadows on my models. Let's put it that way. I hate having, uh, this is actually like, the setup here, as Justin and I were talking about, how we'll change the setup likely in the new studio. Um, but the setup here is not optimal, in my opinion, because it, it casts strong shadows on the model. So let me see here. I'm going to just touch up, just put a little tiny bit more light 
just at the very edges of this to make it come out. Make the edges stand out. I also probably need to shade underneath here. Whenever you have an underside of fabric where it's just kind of blocked in, you know, and obviously on real fabric it probably wouldn't, you know, be solid. Um, just paint it dark. And how dark you want to paint it is up to you. I could just block it in with shadow color. I'm going to put a tiny bit of this color here, here, and here. There we go. That really, see how that, that really crisps up that edge. But it, I'd have to be very cautious putting it in here. I'd have to like just put a tiny touch. And even then it shows up a lot. So I have to be careful. I probably will go back to my previous highlight and blend it in a little bit. I can do that. I can grab a little bit of my previous highlight on my brush and kind of blend the two together. There. All right. Yeah, I haven't seen that one, Coffee Nerdery Beer. Yeah, <laughs> you bought the Master Series full set and you are overwhelmed, Sean Allen. All right, I'm going to actually take a dark color. This is actually, it would be a good dark color to use for that sort of thing. You guys know what I mean. The undersides of cloth like this, where it's like, no way would you ever have light down there. So you just want it to kind of disappear to the eye. This probably isn't dark enough. Something like this is. I could try with the other one, I guess. But usually anybody, any painter will tell you just paint that sucker dark. And then if you have to, if like there's an edge that you can see, maybe keep a little yellow in there. But let's try this, uh, this mixture first. This is the ochre plus, um, I'm sorry, the Palomino gold plus russet brown. I think it's not gonna be dark enough, but we'll see. Stick it all in there. Usually I do this before I shade it and highlight it, so I wouldn't get to, oh, well, that's not bad. That's not bad. It does darken it down. It makes it very neutral. Your eye doesn't go there, and it still suggests that it's yellow. Um, I might take a little bit of this and put it up into the darkest areas. Probably have to wait till that dries. Yeah, that is the downside, actually, to painting at night when you have a really good lighting setup. It makes sure it's the same thing with uh, looking at your phone before bed and how it can impact your sleep. Because you've got all this great, awesome daylight, like, pouring in all around you, and you're sitting there painting at, like, you know, 10 p.m., and your brain is like, we don't have to go to bed. Yeah, that's the downside. Well, there is a horse triad, but there's too many different colors of horse is the thing. So the Palomino Gold is in a triad with buckskin pale and uh, why can I not think of the other color in the Palomino triad? Arg, 9073. Oh, chestnut gold. Duh, that one. So these are made for golden chestnuts. You know, if you are a horse person, you know what I mean. Like chestnuts that are a bit more tan than red. And Palomino is obviously for Palominos and, and then Buckskin for Buckskin. You can use all of these colors as shades and highlight for all those different colors of horses. It's just the majority color that you leave on the model. It's your surface control. Um, and then you've got the Chestnut Brown, which is a reddish brown, and that's over in 9071. Um, and uh, at that point, those are the horse colors I give you. Obviously, we've got a large selection of brown for horses otherwise and grays. Um, yeah, yeah. Try taking a break, and, and I usually stop painting like an hour before my bed rings now at this point. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we can also use the blonde hair triad or the red hair triad for painting horses because, I mean, human hair colors and horse hair colors have a lot in common. We're all using the same type of pigments in our, uh, in our hairs and skin, so. All right. Actually, I like this yellow quite a bit. It is still yellow. Like, it's not tan. You can definitely tell that it's yellow. It's got enough vibrancy to it that it is not, uh, not failing on that point. I do need a little highlight up there. Yay! Look at that! Justin's got all those little colors in there. Although I think uh, 9223 was yesterday, but yeah. I figured, you know. You just may as well just bomb them with colors. Absolutely. Also uh, went through the process of, of uh, getting a custom named bot. Oh. So if you didn't notice, our bot's name is now Darth Abacus Bot. Yes. Because Dave Bot. Yeah. Because why bot. not? 
our bot must love dogs then. You need to program a exclamation point dogs um, into our Discord uh, or into our Twitch commands, and it just makes um, the Darth Abacus bot say, I love dogs. <laughs> All right, we can do that. Because that's in character. All right, so there we go. I added in a bit of this darker brown just at the outer edge, like under this outer edge here, and I left the lighter brown at the back. Um, and there you go. So it just makes that whole area, that underside of the cloth, kind of disappear. But you can still see a little bit of a yellowish color at the back, which is this color. And so that's actually like real cloth would look. So that's fantastic. That's exactly what we would want. Yeah, he has a big Grim Reaper with scythes crossed in his office planer. Or Dave does, so. So it's all thematic. All right. Also, oh. uh, I can give this uh, bot access to the Discord if we want it to. Oh, really? That's that's more for John and uh, Planer. To, yeah, uh, yeah, for you guys to figure out for sure. All right, guys. So there's our more golden muted yellow. Yay! I didn't have time to like do yellow and purple today. I'm probably gonna do white tomorrow. Maybe we'll do another. Uh, maybe we'll do a a uh, highlighting and shading with complementary colors um, show, and we'll do the yellow and purple there. That might be a good idea, actually. Here, I'll put this up on top of paint so it's more in focus. There you go. There you are. Oh, and look at all my colors. The, my palette is pretty today. Yellow is my favorite color, so this is a very happy palette for Anne. So yeah, I think that that worked out pretty well. Yeah, Mr. Bones would have been a good name for the bot too, but that's okay. That's okay. Any questions, folks? This is more of an homage to Dave because when we very first started streaming on Twitch, he was like, "Can I, can I rename the bot?" Oh, cool! I was like, "Not exactly, Dave." <laughs> so here we are. Here we are. That's really funny. Yeah, you can make the bot post when you go live in the Discord. Correct. I just hadn't given it. What I don't want to do is give it permissions that you already have bots that do stuff. I don't want them like cross talking and causing issues where you know like remember when the discord wiped everything i think they're integrated pretty well though i mean i if we have two chefs trying to cook the same dish oh okay that's what i'm worried about yeah yeah i could see that oh, at the same time on top of each oh, other right, right. that's i don't want a whole bunch of redundancy posts too technically. i could get that i can understand that but that looks great in this would also be a good color for lions if you just drop the saturation just a little bit So yeah, we can go to face cam. I can talk at the audience for two minutes and we can find a raid and... Just going to yell at them? Yeah, why not? Okay. Well, they say they understand it. So you know now what I expect. I expect to see a lot of yellow at ReaperCon. This will make me happy. Probably not anybody else. <laughs> but it will make me happy. So yes, 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 yes. And you know, you could probably even use those colors kind of for a bit of gold NMM, but you'd have to get darker shadows and higher highlights, and you'd also have to highlight appropriately. You can make anything go NMM technically. I should do that. I should do colored NMM. There are so many subjects we haven't even, like, hit. In fact, I'm going to grab my little pad here, and I'm going to write those ideas down. So we'll do complementary shadows, because complementary colors and shadows are great. Complementary shadows... And colored NMM, which just highlight placement and shadow placement. So, yeah. Hey, thanks, Greek Nikos. Sub, a sub for Ian's show is a sub, a vote for Ian's show. That's right. Thanks for, for loving the show. Yellow Dragon, yeah! Um, I guess you could find like a desert drake or something and do it that way. Like, you know, like the drakes being lesser dragons. You could do it like that. Sand, sand dragon. This color would be great for a sand dragon, the one I did today. But yeah. It's true. You could make a yellow dragon and make it a unique thing for your D&D &D game and just give it a special breath weapon. See, <laughs> there is no free to Dusty. Um, 
We don't do freeze for the morning show. Essentially, any any sub on this show is just pretty much a vote that says, I love Anne's show. I am subbing to it. Um, Planar Crossroads is very generously offering to start a free giveaway for this show if we reach 1,000 people on our Discord. Uh, and I think we're very few away, just like, what, 20, 30? Um, and Planar just give, gave another sub. Woo! Thank you, Planar. So, Ms. Ann, I, I know you love all kinds of paint. Yeah. Um, so I have a potential raid here. Oh, yeah? Um, can you see from over there? I can kind of see. What's hold, up? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Have you seen this before? Oh, body painting. Yeah. Awesome. This, this I one also seems approve to of the be, corset. This was, that's what I'm saying. This I like this one because it's, it's kind of tasteful. It's not just. Right. A lot of the ones on Twitch are very, uh, it's just pasties, right? Right. Right. Um, <laughs> Let's I, not do that. No, I like this one <laughs> because it builds into what she's doing. And okay. she does a fantastic job. So. Oh, okay. So funky body painting. So you want to see what highlighting looks like on a real person? Yeah. And actually it's the same as miniatures. This is great. You guys should totally look at this. Absolutely. Like she's just essentially overemphasizing various parts of her anatomy and she's painted herself as an orc. So she probably has no idea who we are. But you should go and tell her that body painting is just like other painting. Correct. Uh, and uh, spread the Reaper love. Yes. Keep being awesome. And we will see you guys later today Thanks at so 3 o'clock for more Anne. Yeah, more Anne. Today is my double day where I go and paint the dragons that never end. All right. We will see you guys later. Get ready. And there it is. Pile on in, guys. The Reaper bus is headed on over. Yes, indeedy. We go will, go uh, and look at uh, go look at her awesome greenish skin tone. Yeah, the greenish skin tone is kind of cool. Yeah, it so. is. All right, Th thanks Bye. guys. We'll see, see you later. later.